Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. We continue our conversation now with John Bramnick, the Assembly Minority Leader, who is considering, seriously considering, a run for governor. So let's talk about a, a couple of issues that come up every time there's a gubernatorial election. It seems to be the things that the public cares the most about. Everybody promises they're going to do something about it, and rarely does anybody do anything about it, and that's property taxes and the pension. Uh, I want to start with the pension, because I think the pension is the umbrella that affects everything. W what do we do? I mean, it, it seems like it is a, a problem that's almost impossible to fix. Well, first, people in the pension who've been promised a pension and would be supported by the courts as a contract, you give them the pension. New people in the system, you need to change those benefits substantially. If you're going to be a teacher, you can be a firefighter, a police officer, you can make a determination whether you want to accept this so-called new package. And that new package has to have reduced benefits long term in a pension, may even start with an independent 401k type part of that. And so far, uh, Phil Murphy won't address any of that. So. For new people who choose to go into the public sector and want a pension, they're not going to get the same pension that the people have been in for 10, 20 years. Simple as that. And that's that how you start to fix it. That wasn't a partisan statement. That, that, that's the absolute fact, is that he has not addressed the pension at all. And it seems, considering the public cares so much about it, considering the banks seem to care so much about it, and the creditors, it, it is odd, I'll put it that way, that'll put it mildly, it's odd that he doesn't address it. Well, not if you know what Phil Murphy's basically political landscape involves. He plays to the left, he plays to his base, his base are the unions, and he's not going to do anything to upset his base, which is a left, very, he has a very far left progressive agenda that even his Democrats shy away from. That's why you hear nothing about pensions, because it's within his left-wing progressive universe of support. There's this feeling that I think people have in, in the state that every governor gets in and doesn't deal with the pension because they just hope well, they'll be out of office before it become, before well, everything well, collapses. First of all, Chris Christie dealt with the pension. He's, um, and, and he was the exception. You're well, right. Okay. Yeah. He dealt with it. He had a bipartisan change with Steve Sweeney and some uh, Democrats. And we made some changes in terms of benefits across the board. It was kind of a drop in the bucket, right? Well, it didn't do too much. Well, I think it, it was substantial at the time, but because the, un, the, the deficit is so large that more has to be done. But I think you give them some kudos for making a strong attempt at, at making some changes. And so, it's really hard. That's yeah, no, really I get tough. it. Yeah. I get it. And, and so the argument would be you would need a Republican to, to, to do the, make those changes? Uh, yeah, I would say that that's true. I think that it would be unlikely that if Phil Murphy was reelected and he looks like he's running again, that he would change his tune. Is there a Democrat out there who might be cooperative in making changes? I got to give credit to Steve Sweeney because he actually was the first one before Steve, before the Governor Christie was even around. They had to bring him in with a police escort because he's the one who talked about changing the pension. Do you expect Steve Sweeney to primary the governor? I don't. Why? Because well, because. Uh, the governor, Governor Murphy, has a pretty good control over this progressive wing of the party. And that progressive the wing of the party is basically your base voters. Property taxes. What, what well, should be done? Well, we should, we got to cap state spending at 2%, the same way we cap local spending at 2%. Why don't we cap state spending? We have more revenue every year, but we continue to spend that money. Doesn't make any sense cap it. It seems every time I talk to someone, they have a plan to either cap or reduce property taxes. It never seems to happen. I know it happened. But we don't have enough Christie. votes on the Republican side. Give me 41 votes and then 21 in the Senate and we can get it done. Uh, Democrats have controlled the legislature for 18 years. 18 years. People go, it never happens. They Almost two decades they've been in control. People go, why don't you do anything? I say, why don't I turn to the voter? Why don't you do something? Let's talk about your other career for a moment, yeah. your, uh, your stand-up comedy. I did get to, to see you at the NJBA, the convention they have, and, and you did wonderfully. It took, I think, and you tell me if this is true, I think it takes a moment for some crowds, especially when it's not in a comedy club, 
to understand that the Senate Minority Leader is doing a comedy act. So they have to, you have to get the crowd to catch up to you. You are 100% right. So I come out with a briefcase and dress like this, and the shock, even to NJ Pack, they go, what is this? Because comedians come out with black T-shirts. So I get out there, and I don't say anything for a couple seconds. That's enough to get the crowd go, what is this guy going to tell us where the exits are? <laughs> and then I go, like, then I go, John Bramnick, funniest lawyer in New Jersey competition is pretty light <laughs> and if you if you you do the deadpan and then I do and I've got bad news and good news the bad news is you paid money to see a lawyer tell jokes the good news is I'm not getting paid either so none of your money yeah. <laughs> so you really have to bring the audience in and they have to like you and that opens me up to get to my next joke and you'll be telling jokes very soon uh, at an event coming up with Joe Piscopo. Talk about that. Yeah, so Monday night I'll be at the Stress Factory. That's February 10th with Joe Piscopo and Mike Marino, who's a riot, and Vinny Brand. And then the 15th, I'm actually doing a, quote, Valentine's comedy night at Catch a Rising Star in Princeton, uh, also with Mike Marino. So that's my fun thing. Everybody's got a hobby. Some people play golf. Some people play basketball. Some people, you know, drink. Uh, <laughs> I do all of it. No, I'm just kidding. It's no, it's I'm a blast. just kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I, I, I played around with stand-up comedy a long time ago when I was a weatherman in San Diego, and I think it is it is such a wonderful exercise to get up and it's really you hard. don't have a net. And it's really hard because every word, every pause is essential. You know, we can do an interview like that. I can stumble a little bit here. You can't stumble on the stage because if you lose the audience, you're gone. Give the so, date again on the Stress Factory. This, uh, this Monday? February 10th. That's, that's actually a political fundraiser, but the actual public one is February 15th at Catch a Rising Star in Princeton. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Always you. a pleasure Thanks to talk to you. Thanks Please come time. back when you announce or don't announce whatever you're, I appreciate whatever that. you're going to do. Thanks I'm for your appreciate time. appreciate to have you back. John Bramnick, possible candidate for governor of New Jersey, current minority leader in and the New Jersey lawyer Assembly. In New Jersey. And Sorry the funniest New lawyer in New Jersey. We're coming right back. Newark, New Jersey is booming. Some say it's the new Brooklyn. We'll tell you about it when Jersey Matters comes right back.